Okay, take a look at that. There is a big circle. Let me zoom in so you can see more of it. A big wide circle. And there's another portal. Let's skip right past that and let's keep on going. There are some horses. And there's more of the circle. So this is a project that I've been wanting to do. And let me just leave the rest of this in here for right now. And let me re-equip my shield. So this is what I needed all these stone slabs for. And I'm going to need more of this because it's not going to be just a flat area. It's going to be kind of like a three-dimensional oval, at least underneath to add some basement layers. So I'm going to need a lot of stone. And I've, as you can see, I've already got this whole quadrant done horizontally. I'm working on... I don't know what to call these, but these are just like rows that line up with the lights. And I can also conveniently just come in here and place stone slabs. Don't know exactly what to call that construct. But I definitely do have the border done. And I have these north, south, east, and west lines done. It's uh, a 201 diameter circle. Very big. I've created my own little nether portal. Oh yeah, and the coordinates line up to be perfect multiples of 8, so that was really convenient in finding where the nether portal should be. It's not too far from this main portal. In fact, before I set that up, it linked back to here. But, like I said, I'm going to need a lot, and a lot, and a lot of stone. I have lots of cobblestone from that mining party we did with Mark, but... It's not smelted, and that's something that needs to happen. I mentioned in the last episode that I had an idea for upgrading my smeltery area so that it would be both efficient and still a Rube Goldberg machine, which I really want to do. I think that would be really, really cool. So let's go up and take a look at it and see what we got right now. And I'll kind of talk about the general plane. I'll kind of talk about the general plane. I can speak. It's morning for me. I'll kind of talk about the general plan. And then I'll get started on making some progress. So, well, we're still going to have this contraption where the minecart... Ooh, I got some more stone. Let's go ahead and take you. Still going to have the contraption where the minecart goes through. And still smelting more. That's right, because it had got messed up. And put deposits all the stone and then picks up to smelt it, except there's going to be eight furnaces. And I'm going to want to do this all within a single chunk border. So that... Hopefully, I'm, I'm guessing that's why this redstone was messing up, and that's why the minecart got launched earlier. So hopefully that'll take care of it. And then by having eight furnaces... So what's that going to look like? Because you might be thinking, well, that's just going to mess up. If we have eight furnaces, we have a minecart that comes across here and it runs across the furnaces. What am I stepping up and down on? I don't know. But it goes, maybe it's that stair. It goes back and forth and it deposits all the items into the furnaces via eight hoppers. Okay. This whole thing worked on the principle of each time an item passed through this hopper and went to this chest, which was the same size as the mine cart with chest that deposited the items in the first place, each time an item passed through the hopper, and it would always pass through, it would send out a signal. And after a certain amount of time passed, this signal would go through and launch the mine cart, unless it got blocked by the next item coming through. So as soon as the last item has gone through, 10 seconds later, it would make its way through here, no more items are going through, so this repeater does not get locked and the minecart is allowed to continue. But if we have eight furnaces that are smelting items, some items are going to get, well, the end of furnace, the end of hopper, where all these are going through, are going to get items at a rate of not one item per 10 seconds. So it's not like I can just have, each time an item goes through, it goes through this long chain because the timing may not be exact. It may be 
uh, an instant, and then uh, two seconds later, and then three seconds after that, and then three and, a, uh, three and a third seconds after that, and so the timing won't always line up. So I have an idea for that, and it's going to involve a different approach. It's going to involve a couple of droppers, and each time an item passes through, it'll fire an item from one dropper below to a dropper above, and there's only going to be one item between the two of them. So that if two signals come through the bottom dropper, only one item will be in the dropper above. That is the intended behavior, because then there will be another circuit which will just run on a loop every 10 seconds. It'll get started by the initialization of this whole thing. And every 10 seconds, that'll actually be a little bit more than 10 seconds, but every period of time, it'll query how many items are in the dropper above. And if there is an item in the dropper above, it will tell it to go back down. It'll wait another 10 seconds. But if there's not an item in the dropper above, then it'll go ahead and send the minecart on its way. So it doesn't matter the inconsistency and timing of the items being smelted beneath. I think it'll be better just to show it in action. So I'm going to cut away and make some progress on that once, hopefully... Is this... Uh, still got a bit to go. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make some progress on that, and then kind of show what I mean. Okay, so this timing works well. I currently have these hoppers filled with stuff so that nothing can get through. And it looks like whenever the minecart has items in it, it's properly doing what it should do. And as soon as I take that item out, it falls on through. So good, that should that should work. That should allow the minecart to keep on going back and forth until it has no items to offload, at which, at which point, <clears throat> excuse me, it'll finally fall through. Ready to pick up items. I have a double chest here just so it can extend all the way over here. Kinda didn't have any choice there. Anyway, and then this is where the track goes. It'll come up here and it'll wind up. We do some sort of spirally thing before going up there. Okay, so now that I got that working, this will definitely work now with making sure that I get items in the furnaces and smelting. The next thing I need to do is work on the logic that says that this is not allowed to go until all items get through. So, like I said, I'm going to need a dropper for that. Let me go ahead and get some more stuff set up, because I forgot to make droppers. Okay, so let me take you through what I've got so far. Whenever items get smelted, they pass through this hopper before entering this chest and continuing on to the minecart with chest. Whenever an item passes through the hopper, it sends a signal along this comparator and it also fires this dropper. Now this dropper should normally have an item in it. And whenever it fires the dropper, the item gets put into this one. If an item is in this dropper, it signals that an item was smelted in the last 10 seconds or so. It's actually going to be slightly more than 10 seconds, because even though it takes 10 seconds for an item to be smelted in a furnace, it still has to make its way through the hoppers. And in a worst case scenario, it'll take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and like nine. Ah, uh, that's a third of a second, so that's an additional three seconds, so 13 seconds. So an item in here means that there was an item smelted in the last 13 seconds or earlier. Anyway, so that signal that an item is passing through makes its way over to here. And then there's a clock here, which is not quite 13 seconds, but I have yet to put enough items in there to make that happen. But let's say that that timer's for 13 seconds, so that'll be 39 items total. So after 13 seconds, this, this will get pushed over. The items will start flowing in here, and then well, actually, I guess it'll have to be half of that. Because they'll start flowing in here, and then it'll flow back. And as soon as the items stop flowing, this turns off, which turns this back on, because this would have been off before, because there would have been items in here. And it turns this back on. So as soon as these turn on, this is a signal. This one just comes over here, 
and unconditionally moves items from this dropper back into here. If there were no items in this dropper, then it doesn't really do anything. This, on the other hand, whenever this turns on, you know I can probably actually, well, I need to be able to get back up. This sends a signal along here. And through here. And beyond here is the track that sends a minecart on its way. However, during that time, if there's an item in here, it means that there was an item smelted in the last 13 seconds. And this actually turns this on, which locks this repeater, which should have been off, shortly before this all happened. So I have a single tick here delay and a single tick here delay. So in order to make this thing work, I think I need to set you to three ticks. Anyway, so I think that's sound reasoning for how all this works. I do not have... Hmm. Okay. So the next thing to do then is to go ahead and test this. And I wanted to do this on camera. There we go. So... We have a single item in here. Let's see, so 39. So let's say there was an item smelted in the last 30 seconds. Yep, by the way, this normally would get stuck, but as soon as another item comes through, it resets this. Okay, so then what that did is reset this to over here, so that now an item can go through. And did I see that right? Where are my repeaters? Are you working properly? Okay, so that happens. Then items come out of there. And then what happens? Why didn't that get sent back through? No redstone signal here. Okay. And then there's a redstone signal, but you're not getting the message. Do I... what if... What, can I do this? I can do that, but you didn't update. Okay, well, it looks like before I can even test it, I have to work out a couple of other things. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I moved this over a little bit just so I can be a little bit more compact, and I have two items in here. I was testing something out, but it doesn't seem to make a difference. If I put an item through here, it doesn't wind up there. I have messed with this a little bit, and I think that it might just be a tick timing thing. I might have to change this to a repeater. 
Well, it has to be a comparator, but then a repeater after that, so move this all back by one. That might be what I have to do, but I've been playing around with this and setting up so much wiring and stuff that it's time for me to take a little bit of a break. I need to find something else to do. And one of the things that I'm still doing is fixing up my house. So I guess first order of business is to find out exactly, you know what, I don't need to, I need to go over here. I need to find out again. Just what about my house needs some extra work? I forgot. What am I missing? I'm missing... Bricks? Are there... Oh yeah, okay, so there's some mobs in there. A creeper too, I don't want to blow up my house. So... Yeah, it's looking like I just need some bricks, really. And for that, I need to eat. Well, I also need some clay. And I wonder if I have any already. I was also thinking about putting some sort of secret entrance right here. I could have a couple pistons. They can easily be hidden and they can retract and pull the stairs down. But that's uh, another project. Do I have any clay? Um, I do not see any clay here. Or bricks for that matter. I don't see any over here either. None in here. None in here. None in here. Oh, yeah, I have some bricks. I can make some bricks. That should be more than enough. Just a little bit of a touch-up. Let's go through this entrance as it was designed to be used. And then... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops. I fell down. That happens. And then it should be six on the other side. Because I believe I already had two of them there. Or maybe seven. Because, yeah. I have to fix this. Or... Yeah, okay, six anyway. Okay, now let's make sure this looks good. That looks good. A little overhang there. That looks good. Okay, I think my house is finally in a much better place than it was before. The only thing I have left to do, then, is to fix this issue. Okay, come on, next mob. Okay, come on. Haha. <laughs> I do not want you... ...blowing... ...I up anything. Okay, I can get in here temporarily. Just to take care of this. My inventory's filling up. Okay, so I need to light this place up. Here. Huh? Can I not place them on the back side of these? This is an interesting glitch right here. Uh, if you take a look down here, my torch count's actually going down. But as soon as I do it on here or something, it refreshes. Huh. 
It's like my client thinks that I'm putting the torch there and that I'm losing the torch and the server says no the torch can't go there and it's only whenever I do something like this that it forces it to refresh. Very interesting. Let's see, what side are you on? Okay. Let's check light levels. We should be good, I think. Uh, so what was I going to do about this? I think I said I was going to... Move this. So that the entrance... was over here, I think. I do not have any more inventory space for that. So if that were the case, I'll go ahead and light that up. Place this here. Um, I do not have a chest to put... Well, I have one downstairs. That a zombie had knocked on that door at first. Let's go ahead and offload some stuff. Just to give my inventory some more room. Come back up on over here. And then place... Well, break this. Place the ladder here, here, and here. Climb on up. And then... Break you, put you there. Okay. And then I guess with this being the case... I can add some slabs? How would that work? Actually, I wonder what happens. I put the slab. Ah, uh, that's not a slab. Put the slab here. I can put you there. But I can't climb up you. But I can put you there, and then I can. Okay, so if I made this entire thing out of slabs, and I need to get stairs to go there, to go right in that corner. But if I made this entire thing slabs, then I could have a nice even ground. I wouldn't be able to walk here, but that's fine. I'd be able to walk along this main area. And an attic isn't exactly supposed to be big on space. So I need to go get... Oh, what wood was I using here again? I was using spruce. So I need to get spruce stairs. And then I need to get some oak slabs. I should have plenty of both of the materials necessary to make those now, and I believe I may also have some stairs or slabs already made, because I have been growing a lot of trees. Yep, been growing a lot of trees. Do I have anything over here? I have... Oh yeah, this should be plenty. There we go. I think this will be enough. So we'll come on up back over here to the house. <laughs> Baby zombie. Let's sleep it away. I know that won't actually do anything for the baby zombie, both because it's baby zombie and because it's wearing a helmet, even if it were an adult. That's unfortunate. Okay. But you know what? If you're in the water, you can't move that fast. That's good enough for me, for right now. What else? Lots of baddies right now. Finally stop burning. Okie dokie. So we collapse that. We put these stairs right there. Maybe 30 wasn't enough. Oh yeah, it was enough, just barely. 
But that also means I can take these off, because these are slabs, and so it looks ugly, though. That looks better. Okay, so now I have a proper attic. Now that I have a proper attic, and now that this house is a lot better, I like it more this way. I wonder... Should I put stairs here? And stairs here? And then here and here? Perhaps. But I also want to take this opportunity to move my bed. Because now that I'm more happy with how that house is, I think it's time to make that my house once again. So I'm going to go ahead and get some more spruce stairs, pick up my bed. I'll have to remember to set spawn at some point. Do I have any more spruce stairs here? I don't, just planks. But that's fine, I can make some spruce stairs. I have a crafting area down here. I forget how many stairs I need, but let's just make them all. And then, let's come on back over here. There we go, now it's not so hard to walk in my um, storage area. Maybe I'll add a window or something to the roof, like inside the attic. So, put you there. you off though. This is difficult. I have to place it but just barely. Okay. I can have a torch there, I can have a torch there. And now I need a place for my bed, so let's see, are you a good place? I don't want to see inconsistencies. There we go. So I think you'll work. You'll be a bed just like, it's more like you're a, just a mat or something laying down there. That's cool, I think. And maybe I'll have like a chest or something. A little bedside chest. I don't have the wood on me to do that. And then maybe also like a little crafting area, like I can build it where a stair is instead. Just put a little lawn there. I think that'd be cool. Um. Anyway, so yeah, I guess this is my new room. I'll go ahead and log out here because I really need to take a break. What happens if I put a light source there? So you're doing something weird with the corner there and there, and I, that was just on the same angle of the... I guess that's just a coincidence. But yeah, uh, I spent quite a bit of time trying to work that smelting situation out. There is a solution. I just need to think about it more and do some more tests. But I think this is going to be it for this episode. So, thank you for watching.